I just got to the Nubba Lighthouse. I'm gonna be running my first DJI Mini 3 video uh, narrated flight. So very excited because Nubba Lighthouse always uh, produces some drama, which today it is. I wasn't expecting it, uh, but there are some pretty serious waves. So I'm excited to uh, get the DJI Mini 3 out there, see how it handles this subtle wind. But uh, let's show you really quickly some of these waves. Got a good rock to shoot from. Really quickly show you some of the waves we got here today at the Nubble. Resting over the rocks over there. Just you wait though, there'll be more. See all the ducks and geese fighting away the there. Alright, so first time ever recording my screen on. I want to show you quickly how it's handling. Oh, it won't focus, come on. Alright, it's handling the wind pretty good, but it's windy today, 19 miles an hour. All right, so from here on out, I am going to be recording audio inside. The waves, um, I just kept the waves recorded as um, I did the screen recording. So the cool part about the new RC, micro, uh, RC controller for the DJI Mini 3 is that you can hook up um, via USB a external microphone. So I did that, which is picking up the waves crashing and the audio, a little bit of my jacket, and even a couple phone calls that came through. But... Uh, I did forget to put my uh, Mini 3 on airplane mode, but as you can see, the waves are crazy today. I'm so happy I decided to come out to the Nubble. Um, as cliche as it is, it's the perfect place to test this drone uh, for the first flight. So um, I found a place that's away from the people, uh, even though it's kind of a windy day, mid midweek, uh, it, the, the parking lot is still pretty, pretty busy. So as you can see, looking back, there's some cars. Um, there's also some power lines that people don't know about that um, you can get caught up in. As you can see, there's a power pole coming up to the right of that um, that second catwalk. But it's such a cool place to photograph. It always brings drama. Um, so this might walk through some of the things that I need to do as I skip through um, because it is such a new device. But I'll, I'll kind of talk you through some of the things that I'm doing. The cool part about this new controller as well with the built-in screen is it's got um, a button on the top left and the top right to quickly transfer back to your video and your photo mode so the right side if you half click that shutter it's going to actually bring you back to the camera mode um, it'll even center autofocus on a subject uh, as it's doing now on the screen and then it quickly switches back over to the camera so you don't have to take your hand off the controller So that's shot number one of today's flight. I really like the dynamic range. Even though I took one picture, I was able to get, um, I think, a fairly nice uh, photo there. So I switch over to the 40 to 8 megapixel because that's probably one of the other bigger upgrades from the Mini 2 SC is that it's able to shoot a 48 megapixel photo. Even more dynamic range. Um, obviously, because of the, the, the ratio, you could really print something like that out pretty big and it gives you a little bit more diversity when you want to crop something as well. So I decided to get even lower because I thought that might allow me to get a better perspective of the waves crashing uh, against the rocks. This is always a fun side of the Nubble Lighthouse to photograph because um, everyone else who, unless you have a drone, is going to be taking pictures of um, you know the parking lot side or the rock side. So. Um, seeing the drama that happens over here is always exciting um, and I thought it'd be a perfect place to switch over once again one tap of a button on this controller switches you right over to the true vertical um, and instead of doing a quick shots which would perform 
what's called a rocket maneuver. I'm gonna do it myself manually. Uh, I don't do it perfectly, but I do end up using this clip later on, um, which I think is, is really dramatic. So it's basically starting at kind of more of a portrait level, uh, eye level, and then kind of raising elevation and moving, rotating that gimbal down um, with the, um, the top left, you know, toggling ability there on the controller. So um, as you can see, even though it's de December, I can't believe here in Maine, uh, you still see partially yellow and green grass. Um, once again, these controllers are going to default at 118 to 120 meters high, which is about the 400 meter, uh, 400 foot mark um, that we have to stay underneath uh, in an uncontrolled airspace. Another thing to keep in mind is in the bottom right hand of the screen, you can see that uh, I have the uh, resolution in frames per second at 4K. When you get your new drone, that's going to default at 1080p. So no matter what drone you have, if it's, it shoots 4K, 2.7K like the Mini 2 SE, you have to make sure to kind of go in on your first flight uh, if you want to shoot that high level and, and correct it because um, otherwise you'll be shooting in the default setting. I mean, it'll kind of raise elevation out again. Um, really cool perspective on the waves. You can start to see that mist. Um, the exciting part about the Mini 3 is that I probably could handle putting a, a neutral density filter or a UV filter on this gimbal. I feel like it's a little bit more advanced and can handle um, you know that, that extra little weight that uh, it's not much, but it's just enough uh, to you know to add to the to the drone. As you can see with with the waves, part part of the sky, and even the lighthouse. Whoa, that's a huge wave! Holy moly! Um, you see it get a little blown out, um, and that can be corrected in post process. But I do sometimes like to add a UV and a neutral density filter. Uh, so coming down here, this is probably one of my favorite clips of the flight. You guys, look at this. I just thought that was really cool, um, you know, how, how the waves broke against the rocks and decided to just even stop there because um, what I oftentimes do, and bear with me here while I fly uh, around, you know, sometimes part of my flight is just scoping out what might be the most dramatic vantage point and not putting all my eggs in that basket, but I've learned a lot even just from photographing here a lot where certain things are most dramatic but even on a day like today where I feel like I'm even seeing some of the some of these waves I'm just even impressed by as someone who comes here all the time um, you know I I will probably spend some of this flight even just scouting around I decided to switch it up again and try some um, of the automatic exposure bracketing that's allowed with the mini 3 um, here I am so if you do have one of the built-in screen controllers, if you swipe down twice, it'll go to, to that menu option that I just had pulled up. Um, another killer wave coming in the bottom. So I decided to grab this shot. Uh, really happy with it. It's not my favorite of the day, but I think it's really cool to see that huge wave come crashing in. Um, you know, another thing too is a little patience pays off. Sitting in a, a spot for a little while and waiting for the next um, you know, round of waves in this case. Um, you know, pays off throughout the flight. So, and in this case, if I miss a shot, I'm truly not worried because there is plenty of waves to go around. Um, the sky is beautiful. The sun is even poked out a couple of times. Um, but I'm getting a nice diversity of um, kind of soft filtered light. Ooh, I love the way that mist coming in from the back of those waves looks. Um, if I had a little bit more time, I'd probably stick around till sunset on a day like today. Um, I think with the winter storms, I'll be getting more drama like this, so stay tuned. I'll be back to the nubble for sure. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been to Maine or a lighthouse in Maine uh, or New England in general. Uh, we have a ton of different lighthouses in Maine. I think we have potentially just over 100. I'd have to check again. I used to have a huge map of every one of them. Um, the Nubble is probably one of the most photographed out of all of them. So I hope you can see why because I mean it really has a little bit of everything and the fact that it is on its own island I think allows it to be uh, a you know, easily photographed subject. You can find all different types of compositions and angles. Uh, even I think obviously with the drone that's really um, allowed me to get different perspectives than ever. So. This is probably one of my other favorite, you know, progressions. Uh, keep in mind too, if you can, if you can see the gimbal angle, I'm just at about plus two. Um, that means the gimbal's 
raising above the horizontal line, um, which is another thing these mini and, and newer DJI drones can do. My original Phantom, while wow, I'm catching some real mist there, um, these mini drones and the new DJI drones, they have the ability to look up. Um, my original Phantom 4 could not do that, so another cool thing to keep in mind. So as you can see, the sun's starting to poke out a little bit here, and um, you know I think it's probably time I, you know, catch some of these waves breaking against the rock from, um, you know, a downward angle. So bear with me while I take a couple shots at this. Um, I don't end up taking any pictures. Um, I think waiting for some sort of density filter would be helpful for getting a more, you know, maybe dramatic shot. Um, I'll definitely be back with the Mini 3, considering its uh, phot photographic capabilities with doing some maybe long exposure stuff. Um, a day like today would be perfect for it, but the, the ocean's always a great place to do it. So I'll be back. That shot there is definitely one I'll use. One thing's with drones that I think if you're new to it, certain certain scales can be hard to get used to um even these rocks for example it took me a little while i've raised a little bit of altitude here to get um most of them in frame and i'm messing around with what angle whether it's 90 degrees or 75 looks best but um if you go to like the mountains for example you might say oh i'll get this angle or that angle well that angle could be 900 feet above where you are so keep that in mind uh, right now we're able to get most of the shots we want at a pretty reasonable height um, some of my favorite drone photos are actually under 50 feet. It might be because I'm on the coast and I'm on more sea level a lot of the times, but really love how the lighthouse is getting kind of backlit now. We can see some of the mist and steam coming off um, of these huge waves. Um, and the cool part about that is, um, you know, keeping any, using natural light, whether you're doing wedding photography, drone photography, you know, having your subject with the light at his back, usually, um, you know, tends to be a good starting point. When you have the sun completely lighting up uh, your subject, it can sometimes come across as too harsh, but something like this is really dramatic. Um, you can see all the details of the light. Um, that I will probably mess around with a little bit more in post-process. I wanted to share it quickly with you guys here, but um, I did take, obviously, the automatic exposure bracketing, which is three photos, and I can you know, mess around in Photoshop with those and layer them up. Figured it would probably be a good time to switch back to true vertical shooting um, to do kind of a low fly pass over the light. Because I'm still new to the vertical shooting, I'll probably keep it reasonably high above the waves <clears throat> because uh, the last thing I need is this new drone getting taken out by uh, like a 10 foot wave that is really great though that's exactly what i'm here for that was perfect timing the, the the loving the light that i'm getting i'm getting kind of like a little sunburst here from the back light um and here i am going to go around the, the lighthouse now from the left hand side and do a little bit of a spin might be a really cool uh shot to speed up one of my favorite apps to use um that's free is CapCut pro or cap cut I should say I do pay for the pro version which is I think pretty reasonable maybe nine dollars a month um, which allows you to do a lot of cool editing things but the free version even allows you to speed up slow down videos which allows you to kind of give that boomerang effect if you notice now here with the Sun because the Sun's at my back now instead of behind the subject we're starting to get a little bit more of that noise where the the, the whites are a little bit too blown out uh, but that's okay. I'm going to still grab a few shots. Um, but just goes to show, you know, my, my angle before was maybe a little bit more preferred. Um, you know, I think the wind's about still about 19 miles an hour, so I'm seeing my battery is about 40% left, um, which the drone is calculating at about 11 or 12 minutes. So plenty of time to grab a few more shots, but um, I decided to go back to where I started that original video shot and grab a couple still images. Okay. 
once again, you know, sometimes taking a photo, adjusting your position, and taking some more is never a bad idea. Kind of don't be afraid to be patient with yourself and your process. I think flying a drone and getting used to flying a drone, um, you know, can be a little stressful. So one of the reasons why more and more flight time gives you more confidence to take shots and even fly, you'll see in this video, I kind of push the, the battery life like I kind of do in a lot of my videos. Um, but it's because I'm confident in the drone and I'm confident in the area as well. But, you know, even just with developing a photo and giving it some time, uh, like even a shot like that, I, I having a bird fly by and a wave, you know, you might want to sit and let the, the drone just record some video and just see what happens for five, you know, five minutes or so. Don't be afraid to just let it fly. Don't be down on yourself if you miss the shot. There will definitely be more. Trust me. I've been doing this a long time. Here we go. Here's another shot that I really liked. Um, and with the either the, the 12 megapixel stills that it can shoot with the automatic exposure bracketing, this one's a little bit more dramatic um, with the wave there. Uh, or the 48 megapixel especially. These are definitely images you can blow up in print. I've printed some of my drone images up to um, 36 by 24s. I think even some uh, 40 plus uh, inches and they've all looked really good. Another uh, image I'm really actually happy with. I think I'm probably more excited about this image uh, than the original shot I got earlier. Um, and this one too as well, you know, these clips, I just grabbed a quick video as that wave crashed. Um, once again, the controller has really been helpful. I'm already getting kind of used to it. Um, and, you know, being able to quickly switch between photo and video. I've decided to, while the battery had enough left, do a quick shot. Um, Lighthouses are perfect stationary subjects to use these great features um, and Helix I thought would be a good one. So here I am dragging my finger across the stream. Um, an obstacle avoidance that kind of blurp messes with it but on the bottom you can see that the max radius, you can actually change what that max radius is. Um, in, the, in a future video I'll probably do a review of all the quick shots features um, allowed in the Mini 3. If you're someone who's curious about using those um, I do have a great video about that for the Mini 2 SE, but wow, these waves from this angle are definitely um, looking fantastic. The sun's poking out, you can see the mist sticking around, which helps to add to that high contrast of the rocks and the light in the sky, uh, the lighthouse that is, so really happy. And doing something like a quick shot where it slowly does a maneuver, it's nice and smooth, especially when you have drama like waves. Um, nature, whatever it might be, a sunset, um, you know, a quick shot is, like I said earlier, it allows the drone to kind of take some time to capture enough stuff, and um, if you're in the right setting with the right light, it's going to, it's going to, you're going to be happy with something that it captures, so. As you can see, as we circle around the light, um, the light does get blown out, the lighthouse does get blown out a little bit here, so. Once again, I think I'm most happy with the angles from uh, the other side of the light. You can even see the solar glare kind of coming around that red shed. But um, either way, this drone really can handle some great dynamic range considering it um, doesn't have a neutral density filter. Now I did stop the video because I didn't want to go over the uh, parking lot um, as well as the power line. So I um, was happy with the shot that I grabbed and I'm going to start making my way back the other side. Every time you see those yellow brackets, that's the drone um, doing that quick autofocus and switching back over to camera mode, uh, which, which is great. So even though, like I said, we were kind of getting blown out with some of the whites in the image, I really like that shot. That is something I would print for sure. Now, because I'm under 20 something percent, it's uh, did prompt me to come home, but I did cancel that return home so I could kind of um, <clears throat> utilize the 20% as I decided I wanted to. It's just such an awesome day that uh, maybe normally I would have allowed the drone to come back on its own, but I, I just having too much fun. The 
Extended battery though of the smart, intelligent battery, I believe it is, um, is supposed to be almost 15 or 20 minutes more. Uh, I'll have to go back and check what the true time was of this flight, but uh, I could could have definitely used more. I'm gonna probably order, ugh, I'll probably order another battery. I actually have another Mini 3 coming in the mail. Um, so I'll have another battery, but geez, you can just see more and more waves from this angle. Um, but yeah, definitely am gonna push this drone to catch a few more images before the flight's over. Um, this is a great angle. I, I do love, um, you know, what this, this shot, the lighting in this shot for me, I, I do really like um, the sky, the color of the ocean the different types of blue. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm settling on these rocks over here, which like I said, is, is typically a place people don't hang out, unless they're fishing, that is. Whoa, that wave in the background was pretty, pretty huge. All right, so now that I'm kind of home, uh, you can see that the drone senses that I'm close by because although I'm at 15% battery life, it has more of a green, uh, hue to it which I think just says you've got enough battery to get home because it's basically is home um, so with that being said I'm going to capture a couple of these quick waves whoa that one was like perfect timing I can't believe that I don't think I'll go any further though because I don't want uh, to lose this drone yet I'm having too much fun with it maybe uh, one of these days if the second one decides to arrive I'll get a little bit more aggressive and I'll uh, you know do a real low fly over one of these waves um, I've done that with my Phantom a couple times and captured some pretty awesome shots. I do feel pretty lucky to be on the coast here where we seem to have, uh, you know, a lot of cool, uh, subjects to capture. So, um, I am going to land handheld, uh, just because sometimes dust and debris does settle on these rocks. Um, and there we go. You guys, awesome. Really happy with the first flight. I hope you had fun. Here's a quick video of what I captured. And if you found any of the stuff in this video useful, I would really appreciate a like, comment, or a subscription. So uh, let me know if uh, you're flying any of the drones, the Mini 3, the Mini 2 SE, uh, Mavic, any of those drones. Love to hear what people are flying, where they're flying from. And thanks again. This is the Drone Guy.